welcome everyone to another episode in real time for some of us uh, walking around the world, hanging out of Lunar Crush Live. Uh, we're so excited as we always are to have the Polygon and QuickSwap team here. Uh, we've had the team, for, we've had both you guys on before. It's great to have everyone back. I think Rock, I missed the last one because I had just gotten hit in the face with a baseball, which is a story for a long another time. Um, yeah, but you told us about that. <laughs> I'm super excited to have you guys on and um, kind of go through some of the updates, hear what you're up to, um, you know, so just want to make sure everyone knows, you know, we do not take payment for our live streams. We bring on fun people at projects who are busting their ass and building in this space. Um, and we're, we just want to have a fun conversation. Make sure you get in there and ask some questions. John, I think we're going to give away a couple of t-shirts. We got the new Lunar Crush oh, yeah. Boy t-shirts. There you go. We have two t-shirts away to whoever is in there asking good questions. Um, and then uh, always slam slam that subscribe button. You don't tap it, you don't click it, you slam it. Um, so want to get right into it before we get to intros. Um, last time we had Sandeep on, it was October 21st, John it says. Polygon didn't exist. Um, right. It was still Matic Network, and the, I think the price was like two cents. Market cap was 12 million. Um, last time we had you on rock with Quick Swap, uh, May 27th, um, <laughs> now over a billion in TVL, right? And yep. it, you guys were just listed on Coinbase two weeks ago. Uh, so congratulations to to everyone on just building and working hard and, you know, bringing more people into the space. So well done. Um, so with that, want to we'll do a little round table and maybe Samip, we could start with you. Where where are you in the world today? Uh, what's, what's your day-to-day -day look like right now, what you're working on? Yeah, so like I'm in New Delhi right now. It's in India, and it's almost like 10:30 p.m. for me. Late, to, it's too late. But I love doing this podcast, these interviews, you know, these live streams. So yeah, it's good for me. My day-to-day -day life basically looks like mostly working on QuickSwap, right? Because like this is crazy, right? So like entire DeFi space, entire blockchain space, so crazy that it doesn't give you time for anything else. Right. You can look at Sandeep as well. He's like interviewing and he's swapping at the same time. Right. So that basically <laughs> tells you the story about day to day life of like people like us, people like Sandeep and all. Right. So it's basically a quick swap. I'm working all day. And when I'm free, I like I love to read books, listen to some music stuff. And yeah, that's it. Like That's how my day looks like these days. Awesome, man. Well, we appreciate you staying up late with us, um, you know, and, and getting getting to our audience. So. Sandeep, where, where are you exactly? <laughs> I am uh, currently in UAE and I am in a mall because uh, Dolce and Gabbana, like some high end, even I, I had never, like, I'm really sorry, like, they might kill me for this. Like, you know, I had never heard Dolce and Gabbana <laughs> brand because, you know, like, never heard of them? Wow. Wow. Is that an Amer yeah, maybe yeah, it's yeah. more of an American, European <laughs> thing? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, maybe, you know, and, and, you know, this was like just, just outside of my reach, uh, being an Indian middle class guy, like, you know, so I never really even uh, evaluated something like that. And then they kind of launched this, uh, they are launching the NFTs, their new collection uh, NFTs on Polygon, and I was invited to, uh, I am invited to Venice uh, for their event and then you know like two days back somebody scared that you know the Italian people are very classy and then you know they are going to like you know you should not do this like I was or I was thinking that just taking my jeans and then you know my sports shoes and with a with a t-shirt to go there and they're like dude they will not allow you to enter and all that you are representing Polygon and all that the moment somebody said you're representing Polygon I was like okay now I need to be serious then and then uh, you know I've been trying to shop around and you know then, then also, so I went yesterday in there is uh, this Dubai mall, right? So I went there, and it's kind of uh, like I went into this section where the Dolce and Gabbana and these guys are, and then those things are so costly. Like I was like, no, even though, <laughs> even though I can pay for it, but I don't think my Indian mind or Indian brain, middle class yeah. brain, will ever allow me to buy anything like that. Yeah, so it should not. Love that. <laughs> it should not. Allow Love that. Yeah, yeah, and I I went to I went straight to Zara. And then bought something, and then you know somebody <laughs> told me that no, you can't buy Zara. They will, you know, immediately recognize this is Zara. <laughs> so then I came there again, like try to buy some tuxedo and whatever, but I couldn't find one. So yeah, I'm going to be like, okay, you know, just show up in but your in your matic in your matic swag like this <laughs> with a with a blazer. And I I used to I you've seen me. I've worn that to conferences in the last couple of years. 
Yes. Yeah, you either yeah. you either need to show up like you don't care at all, or you just got to go yeah. for it all the way. Like, there's only two options yeah. here. So. Yes, 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 yes. Send yes. We're happy to send you a Lunar Crush T-shirt right now. <laughs> we'll, yeah, we'll have it waiting for you at Venice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, then I'll be at that. Yeah. Yeah, the, the Lunar Crush designers and the Dolce and Gabbana designers are on the same level, so you'll you'll fit right in. Yep. <laughs> so speaking of, we've actually been uh, talking to a really big uh, merch company that does some really cool stuff, and I guess it's a good transition actually talking about shirts and clothing. So uh, we're most likely uh, we haven't finalized like negotiations and how it will all work and execution, but uh, we're most likely going to be launching a Polygon ecosystem merch store. Uh, and so this would have, uh, you know, gear from, you know, Quick Swap, uh, you know, of course, uh, Matic Polygon and other projects on Polygon. So this will be a really cool way to, uh, you know, get, get some swag out to the community. Very cool. Yeah. And projects will be able to do cool things like um, subsidize uh, a piece of merchandise like a shirt. You know, if there's uh, some event, they could say, hey, for just this amount of time, we're going to subsidize this shirt you know, on the merch store, you know, you can get the shirt for like, say $5 or something. Or maybe if you complete some kind of treasure hunt or giveaway, you can get the shirt for free from the merch store uh, or something along those lines. So there's a lot of cool stuff. Uh, we, we've even been talking to them about like doing uh, NFTs linked to things. They've done some really cool jersey drops for uh, like they did one for Badger Dow and, uh, and some others that was really, really successful. I think that one you get like uh, a special APY boost on Badger. Uh, so there's different kind of things you could do with it. Pretty exciting stuff. But yeah, anything to get the word of Polygon out. I think I've had this shirt here. Uh, or no, this one actually was given to me on my birthday, actually, by Crypto Secret Circle uh, not too long ago, only only a few months ago. This was like a you know limited edition one early on. Uh, but my first one, I think I got I think Sandeep, you gave it. No, my first one I had made in a mall. I had them screen print it, and I had uh, them make one uh, for my girlfriend that was pink with Baby Yoda uh, nice. and and Matic. And then um, and then uh, my next one, Sandeep gave to me. We had a Matic Mitra meetup in uh, at Crypto Mondays in LA. Uh, but yeah, so yep, get some merch very, out. Very cool, and and that will do. So someone can subsidize it, and they'll do fulfillment and everything and shipping yeah. there. That's yeah. very nice. Yeah, yeah, they'll they'll take care of everything for the teams, very, including very if you cool. want the teams to need help with design and things. So this will be huge for just the whole Polygon ecosystem in general. Yeah, I, not to go too deep into like t-shirts, but <laughs> there's it's like we find like it it obviously you guys are all around the world is very international, and so it's like we have giveaways and winners. It's like you're sending these t-shirts to all corners of the world. And it's like, you know, in the US here, USPS like rarely gets there. Or I like I've sent a shirt out and got it back like four months later with like 60 stamps on it. I'm like, this just cost them like $680 to get this back to me. And I paid like 28 or something. I was like, this is just outrageous. You know, so. We should get some of your guys. You guys are part of the Polygon ecosystem too at Lunar Crash. You guys are a big part of it. So I'd love to. Uh, I'd love to. Yeah, we maybe we could get some of your gear on there, or, uh, figure something out there. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, I'd love to. Um all right. Yeah, no, for sure. And so I want to, I want to go around the table, um, you know, having had you guys on before, um, you know, and right now where we are in this industry, in our space, um, I want everyone to give me like, if you could use one word or if needed a sentence to describe like our industry right now, um, what would it be? And I'm going to put John on the spot to give it the first, what's one word that describes the cryptocurrency industry right now? I'm going to give, I'm going to give two words wrapping up. Um, and I say that because I've been like constantly looking at the social activity on our site. Um, and you know, even right now, uh, I think yesterday we were like the, the 20th highest day we've ever recorded. Um, we're not at record levels yet. We were, um, a few months ago, but it's like ramping and ramping and ramping every day for the past, like two weeks has been higher than the last whether it's social traffic, the interaction on our own feed, our, our site traffic, like everything just is ramping up. And that's that's how I feel. That was a lot of words, but there you go. That's all right. It's the word <laughs> and then it's the explanation of why. So it's there you go. Some, it's a cheat code. Samip, you got one, Iraq? Yeah, of course, right? Like uh, if you'll ask me, like for me, cryptocurrency, and again in two words is revolutionizing finance, right? So in my like experience, 
that's what cryptocurrency is doing all about like it's like revolutionizing redefining how finance works like like in simple terms i like that yeah i, I would cool. say uh constant so even though you know we go through times of explosive growth i mean exponential growth and then there's times where the price pulls back even during those times where the price pulls back all the metrics are growing right you know at quick swap we see constant increase in daily users uh constant increase in website traffic you know twitter following engagement uh usage uh, transactions so uh and uh, that's for across the industry so of course when prices up things get really explosive but even when price is down and everybody is, you know, scared and, and all that, it just keeps growing. This thing can't stop. It's a train and it, it can't stop. Right. Sandeep, unless you're pulling a uh, Dolce & Gabbana shirt off the shelf, do you have a word that explains crypto? If not, I can go um, and go. Yeah, go for it. If you have a word uh, which explains crypto. One word right now that explains how you're feeling about the industry crazy <laughs> just crazy. crazy just too much like yeah, like you have to be much. shopping at the mall in the middle of a live stream in the middle of planning flights in the middle of growth yeah. i hear you yeah, you know what like you know i am not even shopping because you know I, I i you know started two hours back and then this is my fourth call that i'm attending and my wife is like i she keeps on asking me do you like this like i was like just choose whatever you want like it can't be too bad just choose <laughs> don't care about it because you know we have like just no time. Uh, I mean, I have still like uh, one personal meeting and after that one more call pending. It's, it's like already 12 hours I've been on call since this morning. So the whole like life is like running away. It's, it's like yeah, yeah. I've, got, I've got three more calls Thank and you. then I'm taking one call in the airport uh, <laughs> for my flight and I've slept about three hours. So yeah, kind like, of, and, we're all in that and, boat, and, I think. And the, the fun thing is that previously I used to think that, okay, you know, being the, uh, you know, founder in a to token startup, it's like, you know, it must be different for me. But there is everybody, be it like somebody who's into the trading business or somebody who's in the marketing or like, you know, whatever. I think I'm pretty sure you guys would also be having very crazy schedules, right? I mean, I haven't found anybody in crypto who's, who's living a uh, chilled out life. Like, <laughs> at least like, exactly. I'm I mean, like, we don't have time to sleep at all. We don't have time to sleep at all. <laughs> And whenever, whenever I, I, I go to bed, like it's rock, he always like calls me sometime in midnight, sometime at 2 a.m., sometime at 3 a.m. Like it's, it's crazy, man. It's crazy. So, <laughs> so then what, I, maybe, maybe some advice to the, the community out there. What, what advice would you give for people to stay sane, stay healthy in, in this market that just keeps ramping? So I was just, uh, you know, a little while ago, I was talking to, uh, you know, like very reputed VC and I was asking them and he was uh, telling me that, you know, I don't see a scenario where, because the, the, the kind of the reward that is there, the incentive there right now in this technology, there's so, so many things to be built. It's like still very, very early stage. Uh, the incentive is built in, in a way that he was saying that I don't see a scenario where this is going to become same for any one of us for some good time. I'm, so, I'm, no, so I, I was, was about to say, say that. that. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was about to say that, you know, like, uh, if you are in this industry, pull up your socks, right? You know, like, I was about to say that. I was about to say that. I'm not or, going to recommend or, to the community to be crazy. Right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't be, like, no, no, don't so, be calm, be crazy. Like in the in the in the Twitter in the Twitter Twitter parlance, they would say that either pull up your socks and work hard, or have fun staying poor. <laughs> <laughs> Just right at it. <laughs> well, it's also there's a lot to. I mean, it's not it's not like the success was there. I mean, we talked to you guys a while ago, and it was like you were just kind of getting things started, and there's a lot of work that leads up to that where you're not you know, in the public eye or not doing live streams, there's no news outlets reaching out to you, you know, it's just you versus you. And I think a lot of that goes unnoticed and people kind of see like, oh, this person's finding some success, but they don't see the backstory of that. They just see you once you're, once you're there. Um, so it's like, no, if you want to really know the story, it's like, let's go back, you know, two years from when the first time it is you heard about what I was working on three years, maybe. And it doesn't, it's not the same story. And so, you know, to the to the folks well, out mean, there, many people, like, put your head down. Yeah, many people say that you know uh, Polygon became an overnight success, and I was like, 
you know it no, took us three is. four three four years to become an overnight success right so you know that's why right, like, yeah. you know, rock was rock has been there uh, right from the start uh, you know from lda and all that and we've been doing so many things so many things and rock has always been like parma bull formatting because <laughs> i think he saw the team very closely working very closely on a lot of stuff and uh, yeah like i think uh, thank god that all that hard work you know basically got some some result out of it if let's say it had it had resulted into something mediocre then it would it would shake your confidence from like the philosophy of what happened and you know like like the life or the universe will figure it out for, for you right so it will kind of shake that philosophy you know at least in my mind that you know it's it's not like if you work hard you you are going to make it so happy that at least that sanity is there i know that you know okay we, we are putting effort for something sooner or later it will come yeah. yeah my biggest reason i was always so bullish on matic was really you guys the team and if i knew how hard you worked and and everyone at matic um you know lda uh my company has been a marketing partner of polygon now for uh two and a half years or so um you know since their very beginning and we went through so many ups and downs you know there were there were times you know crazy times where price was going up and down people were trying to blame the team saying they were selling and there was clear data showing that they weren't and, but you know we went through so much you know fighting fud and i always just told people i mean you know my main investment thesis for it was that fees gas fees will go up and when they do matic will shine and uh you know behind that was the execution the team uh and so i always told the community when people were scared uh you know just wait when the gas fees go up i promise you guys just wait this is the solution that's going to work there's nothing else really out there uh that compares like for, from a technological perspective uh at least at the time now there are some other things that are you know i think can compete uh on a technical aspect but they don't understand that the, you know it's not an overnight thing everybody thinks that polygon happened overnight Matic happened overnight. It wasn't at all. I mean, we were there through all the hard work. It took years to build out the infrastructure. I mean, all of the different things from having like just simple things like Gnosis, a block explorer, uh, you know, all these different pieces that go into the ecosystem, uh, you know, having a DEX with uh, liquidity and volume like QuickSwap and having, uh, there's all kinds of, you know, other pieces like aggregators and I don't know, some even Paul uh, and Sandeep could probably name you know, a hundred different things from a developer standpoint that you need uh, for an ecosystem to grow. And it it took, you know, years for that to happen with Polygon. So these other projects that think they're going to come and just take over, uh, they're just, you, you know, they're in for a surprise. Exactly. And we're already seeing that, like with Optimism. And I'm, I, I, I'm really happy to see what Optimism's doing. I think Optimistic Rollups is great technology. Um, but they saw pretty quickly when they tried to launch uh, that they had to delay because they didn't have the most basic infrastructure pieces needed. Uh, and we're gonna see that in a lot of ecosystems. It takes a long time to build just the, the first foundational pieces uh, to be able to have a successful ecosystem. And Polygon has been there now doing that for, you know, what, three or four years in, in total, if you include like the first stages of development and things, um, but yeah. Exactly, yeah. right, so and, and, you know, I also started working on Polygon very, very early, yep. right? Like two years back or two and a half years back at that time, like Polygon was really new, right? And like all these like things that Zolok is talking about, like Gnosis, Block Explorers. I think even the POS portal was not there, Sandeep, if I'm not wrong, like uh, when yeah, yeah. was I, developing I remember, yeah. I remember uh, like you were asking something, your client was, was asking something to go live right. on in right. April. And I said that, you know, it will be May or May or June. And I almost right. like, you know, pleaded, pleaded you that you know, just stay with Polygon. I will, I will stand by I, you. I, like, I will, whatever you need, I am there for you. Just stay right. with Polygon. Yeah. Right, 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 right. So that, like, that was something, like, you know, uh, which we really like liked at that particular time. That the team was really pushing hard at that time, right? Even the ecosystem was not ready at that time, but they knew that they are going to make it ready on time, right? That was the important stuff. Like whenever, like even, so at that time, I was basically the client of Polygon, right? So I was like into service uh, industry and I was doing a lot of applications on Ethereum and on Polygon. And then we decided to do quite a few applications on Polygon at that particular time. I'm talking about like two years back when even the 
Matrix main net not, was not there. It was like in the beta phase at that time, right? So a lot of stuff was not there. So like, as everyone said, like Polygon is not built overnight. Like it's the people who have like, they have started to know about Polygon overnight and they think that Polygon is built overnight. Well, that's not true. It has taken like two and a half years or three years like to completely build everything, like whatever we are seeing today as it is. So yeah, hats off to you guys and to you and to your team. Thank you. Thanks, man. Like, you know, I <laughs> I think as 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 early as late as like or kind of like uh, till like three months back, even now for some applications I am, but till three months back, like I was kind of on call support for any application. Like anything goes right. like you know, my telegram will up, like you know, your block explorer is not working, this is not working, that is not working. Even now, like some people uh, the, the, the 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 closest projects or the main projects in the ecosystem. Like I think I am a ping or a uh, for them, and uh, yeah, like you know, I think and and you know, bringing back the the good words like you know, quick swap, like I think uh, you know, kind of has has uh, I would say with the, the hard work and persistence towards the user experience and everything has like kind of surprised everyone, right? So I mean, like the way they have been, you know, growing, growing like Sushi Swap came in and you know many other applications came in and and you know they still have the leadership in terms of the uh you know tvl on uh on, on polygon i don't know how these guys are doing it uh you know like i think rock also like you know talks to almost i think like he would be i'm pretty sure the, the his working style he must be talking to a lot of like people directly like you know, hey you should use quick swap and all that do whatever like you can do for marketing quick swap and all that and like pretty phenomenal the the stats that you guys have the tvl and all that so all kudos to your team also so for, for making I mean, a very I... important protocol of polygon right? yeah thank exactly. you Sunil. yeah we're, we're we're talking to i had to start making several in in telegram you can make folders but it only holds a hundred uh conversations so i'm on i'm on to like i don't know 400 projects now that we're you know More either talking about i guess yeah, for, for listing, and that's just for me. That's not including our entire listing team. Um, and, you know, so we're talking to projects for listing, for our new syrup pools, for just integrations into uh, QuickSwap, as QuickSwap is, uh, you know, it's the same as Uniswap. We're, uh, we're a liquidity protocol, and we are used on the back end of many uh, things. So if someone wants to run, like, a DeFi uh, kind of, station in an app where you have different pieces like we're talking to uh right now uh shapeshift uh telcoin recently launched their DeFi ecosystem for uh mobile phones uh they're with they work with like 200 million mobile phone users and so they're using now quick swap on the back end so you could do swaps and and staking and things on their platform and they use quick swap on the back end and there's a ton of different projects that do that so between all those like integrations and projects we're talking to it's yeah we're talking to hundreds it's wow. really wild and a lot of that is thanks to uh you know the polygon team for uh introducing us to a lot of uh great projects and the, the polygon ecosystem just exploded i mean it's crazy it's i think it's it's got to be the fastest for sure there's no doubt it's the fastest growing ecosystem uh in crypto like percentage wise i mean it's growing faster than any uh any you know, other layer two, layer one, anything at this point. Yeah, and I want to talk about that from a, and I do want to talk about which projects you guys are kind of like most excited about, or at least which sectors that are building on on Polygon. But it's like, I want to talk about scale, right? Like you just like outside of you three not sleeping, right? Like and having partnerships with some of the larger other entities that are out there, like finding liquidity in different places. It's like. How do you guys start to think about scaling? It's like Sandeep just said three months ago, he was still doing like, you know, customer success, right? And so it's like with that growth, like how are you guys approaching that from like both organizations? A lot of hiring. Uh, I mean, that's a big part of it. But uh, I mean, so are you asking about scaling like the business side or scaling? Business side, just like getting the right people in place, finding the right people that you know are qualified for the positions that you're looking for. Are you working internationally and it's remote? And like, how do you organize those people to all be on the same page? Is there one massive slack? Like, what, what are you guys working on? Um, so, so for me, there's QuickSwap and then there's Lunar Digital Assets and they both operate very similarly. Uh, they're both international. We hire people, their location doesn't matter. 
Um, we actually appreciate having people from different regions who can cover different kind of things. Uh, so we're constantly looking for different, like a diverse cast, you know, hiring. Lately, we've been trying to focus on building out like our Asian side. So hiring people in China, Korea, and these different places. Uh, we've recently started doing a lot of stuff with uh, big influencers. Uh, we've got like 40 million followers worth of influencers uh, that are all Spanish speaking. So we're trying to spread to the, the Spanish regions. Um, but yeah, it's really cool. The cool thing about crypto is you can work from anywhere. It's remote. Um, you know, earlier you were asking about a tip for like staying sane. Um, so I've been experimenting lately with uh, the digital nomad lifestyle kind of stuff. And that's been pretty cool. I would just I was just in Hawaii for like five weeks. And, you know, I'm still working the entire time, you know, 12 hours a day. But <clears throat> it's nice having, you know, a beautiful view uh, to look at and you know, go during lunch break with my girlfriend and walk to the beach, uh, stuff like that. Um, we did um, we did uh, Santa Barbara before that. We were in Miami. Uh, I have a couple of vacation homes that we've been spending some time at. So I've only been at my actual house for uh, maybe a month out of the last like six months. And that's been pretty good. Uh, it's nice. Who like I said, fish? even if you're work working constantly, you, at least you get a nice change of view, go out to a nice dinner to kind of recharge. What was that? I said, who feeds the fish then? Uh, <laughs> friends or, or, hire some, or hire someone kidding, to come kidding, in. Kidding. It, it's an issue, but. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I love, uh, so yeah, business business Sandeep, I love right to here. hear too about oh. like how you guys are thinking, you know, from your perspective, how you guys think about scaling and partnerships and, you know, like, you know, like you said, Rock, 550 million people out there that speak Spanish. Um, you know, it doesn't seem like there's as much of a, a adoption happening there as there is like in North America and, um, you know, in Asia specifically. So it's like, how are you guys thinking about that? And if Sandeep wants to jump in, I don't know where he's at in the mall right now, but no worries if you can't. Yeah, no, yeah, no, we're... I... Go yeah, ahead, I'm Sandeep. Here, I'm here. So, um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's, it's actually a very relevant uh, question and answer to this. Uh, pretty big because you know like in terms of scaling like we are today uh, almost around 150 people so that's like for a protocol is like a pretty massive team and uh, you know but then some part of it because you know, we acquired a few companies like you must all must have seen that we acquired Hermes for zero knowledge rollups and uh, you know then uh, uh, and then, um, you know, like there are like few other things also, like, you know, now we have Polygon SDK, Polygon uh, Avail, like something is being built in India and all that. So development teams itself are very, uh, you know, are doing a lot of, I mean, there are, there's a lot of work going on on the development side only, like forget about the, 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 the marketing and, you know, business development side also. Uh, but then, um, you know, uh, we are also growing on on various uh fronts like in terms of the business team i think our business team has now brought like 25 30 people and uh, i would say that currently i mean you are right that you know we have to scale we are trying to build these executive structures uh around us uh which will ensure that uh, um you know we will uh, eventually like everybody like the team has like some more hierarchy till now we have been very very flat and i was telling that i used to be the the the, the product uh, support uh, i mean uh, the, the the customer support so you know we are trying to build these uh, you know um, we want to we are trying to build these kind of executive layer uh, where you know we have let's uh -oh. We are, we are trying to, you know, build this good layer that, uh, you know, now where, let's say, business development team has hierarchies and all that till now we've been very, very flat. So, you know, like, I mean, I don't, there is no other way apart from automating a few things and then adding more and more people. And I feel that, you know, by, by you know, mid-2022, uh, we will be like, you know, uh, it feels to me that we'll be beyond like 300 people. Wow. That's really cool. Yeah. yeah. And it's interesting hmm. to think about, um, like when you say it's very flat and it's like when you're a young company, it, it like, it's very difficult to say like, Oh, 
I'm going to hire someone that's not actually going to like <laughs> put their hands on something. You know, it's like the hardest thing. You're like, well, like, why would I hire someone that can't actually like in your mind? I'm not saying they're not doing anything, but not be able to like pick up something and deliver it. Right. But their job is to make sure that the rest of that team can kind of pick up and deliver. And, you know, you can't if you're just going to stay flat, then it's like, you know, that you're going to be overwhelmed now with management um, versus saying like, hey, just bring one other person in there. And now how can you scale and bring those things in? So I can completely sympathize with that for sure. And I think I think we are in a very similar phase right now, like the phase that Sandeep is talking about. QuickSwap is in that particular phase at the moment where everything is like kind of flat right now. And if like something has to be dealt with, it's either me or it's Rob. Like we'll have to actually put our hands everywhere. Like, like Sandeep used to put his hands everywhere, like three months back, as he said. Right now, that's something which we have to do because like we are in, still in the early stages, like, you know, of our life cycle. We are not even a year old now, not even 12 months. So we'll be like 12 months old somewhere in October, I guess, right? Or like 4th or 5th October. We'll have a we'll have a birthday party at that time. But yeah, so like it's still, it's still early, very, very early for us. But we have been trying a lot to right now not to create a like sense of hierarchy but to hire right side of skill set like that's where our focus is right now to like both from the marketing and from the development perspective to find to find out and hire right people who could work with us with our mindset with our decentralized stuff and all like all that stuff right because like honestly speaking it's very hard to find out the right talent as of now like the biggest challenge that like we feel like, especially in the development side it's very hard to figure out like to find out the right talent but we have been trying yeah. our Best and for, true. Yeah, and for QuickSwap, <clears throat> it's a bit unique because we're not a company. So exactly. we're a decentralized project. So we always have to keep that in mind and we always have to build with that in mind. Uh, so it's interesting. We use a lot of so there's so many people involved in QuickSwap. You have, you know, uh, Lunar Digital Assets, my company, um, which, you know, handles a lot of the marketing and then a lot of the BD as well. But then we've been expanding out the quick swap uh, kind of internal uh, uh, BD and listings team. Uh, and then you've got, we've got a design team that's external uh, to quick swap as well. We've got multiple developers contributing uh, to different parts of the code uh, that are external. We've got multiple internal developers that they work with um so there's like so many different pieces uh that we use and there's different teams uh that help with things i mean even polygon helps us so much with like sending us projects and you know given that we're the the largest most daily users on uh polygon um you know it they kind of take a lot of our feedback when it comes to like hey our users are complaining about this on polygon what can we do to fix this so then they'll work on a fix and try to improve things. Um, so Paul, I think QuickSwap is a little bit of a kind of testing ground for a lot of things, Polygon. Uh, you know, we kind of, you know, along with when Aave came, so between like Aave and QuickSwap, and then obviously a bunch of others too, uh, but we kind of like broke a lot of the things on the network in a way. Uh, the blockchain was always stable and great, but then there was a lot of front end stuff, um, RPCs, graph node and, and things, uh, even like analytic sites like CoinMarketCap and CoinGecko didn't have the proper kind of plugins to layer two. And so we've been working with them and, and kind of scaling all the different aspects of, of Polygon um, I think from, from our side and Polygon yeah. side and, and a bunch of other, there's so many teams that work out like the graph, you know, we, you know, we just work to add with to them that. constantly. And, go ahead. Just to, just to, just to add to that, I think QuickSwap is, is a challenging project for like any infrastructure like product that comes on board like when graph came on board like quickswap was the challenging for graph protocol to handle all the load that quickswap is generating when d5 pulse came on board they were like we can't launch you guys right now we'll have to do some special handling behind the scenes just to handle the traffic that you guys generate right and uh, like similarly when these all these node providers came on board when we started using them they were like you know okay so we'll have to tune up our systems to handle your load so it's like quick swap is a testing ground or i would say uh, it's a scaling ground if you want to test your technology start using quick swap and you'll know the reality it's like that and uh, just to add to that i think you know rock said in the beginning that quick swap is not backed by any company or any entity we are in true sense a remote comp like a remote product right so quick swap is i think it's the only pro project successful project which is not backed by any company which is not backed by any entity 
but we are still listed on Binance, we are still listed on Coinbase, we are still listed on Crypto.com, and a lot more exchanges are yet to come, right? Which we just can't discuss over the call, but it's going to happen. So yeah. Announcements. <laughs> well, speaking of those announcements, I'd love it's to speaking, ask about Dragon's. Of, I'd love to ask about yeah. Dragon Syrup a little bit. I was reading about it. I it was, sounds super, super interesting. Tell us more. Maybe, maybe Rock, you can tell more about the syrup, and then we can make an announcement. <laughs> sure, sure, yeah. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, uh, yeah, we recently launched Dragon Syrup. I think this is probably our biggest feature we've ever uh, launched, uh, or most exciting. Uh, we've gotten, I think, so far around uh, five million. I think when we first launched it uh, four days ago, we had around. Uh, 3 million, a little over 3 million in contributions. And now we're up to 5 million. Uh, there it's flowing in pretty quickly. Uh, we've only That's launched. Yeah. yeah. Right now it's 62 million in total deposits. Oh, oh no, no, no. I'm talking about how much projects have contributed to our ah, syrup. Okay. So the way it works is it's uh, very similar to pancakes, uh, syrup pools. Um, we'll actually, uh, give them some credit. They've done some really cool things at pancake and there's a reason that they've gotten such crazy growth. Obviously they have Binance behind them to help them grow. But uh, besides that, they've, they've launched some really cool things. And so we thought it would be a good idea to, uh, to launch our own version of their syrup pools. And so far it's going really incredible. Uh, basically uh, for in the past projects that came to QuickSwap, we would give them rewards uh, in Quick. That's where all the quick inflation actually comes from. Uh, almost all of it, 97% of all tokens are basically going to that. Uh, that can change with community governance votes and things which we will have some coming soon uh, that are actually really exciting that we will uh, be recommending using tokens for some cool things. Um, but uh, most of our inflation goes to provide uh, liquidity providers. And so, oh, there you go, cool. Um, so the way Syrup works is instead of uh, projects coming and we give them quick rewards and then their community comes and brings uh, liquidity, volume, users. That's how our community grows so much is because we you know, work with all these projects and then we kind of assimilate all of their communities and they're happy with it, we're happy with it. We get their communities, their communities get a place to trade their token with no gas fees and one to two second block times. It's, it's a great relationship. But now we've added this new uh, feature, Syrup, where projects will, uh, instead of us just giving them you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of dollars of quick sort of for free now they give us in return uh some of the tokens from their project and it's great for them because they get tons of exposure obviously quickswap has we have more daily users than almost every ethereum project in the world combined and there's what twenty thousand, you know ethereum projects and we've got more than almost all of them combined uh minus uniswap and there's even been days where we passed uniswap That's wild. Uh, which is pretty pretty incredible uh, but you know, so we've got a huge audience, uh, like we get, I don't know when Semi tells me the numbers, I'm just blown away, like millions of calls to our website or our, our RPCs like daily. Uh, it's really, yeah, like really hundreds cool. of millions, hundreds of millions, not just million, like hundreds of millions. Yeah. Yeah. It's really nuts. So these projects love it. We give them exposure, uh, people, and it's really cool because so projects, so let me kind of explain simply how it works. You stake your quick, uh, actually, let me go back. If you stake liquidity on QuickSwap, you get a portion of the trading fees from that pair. So let's say you stake USDC Matic. You will get trading fees back in USDC and Matic, just like on Uniswap. Then on QuickSwap, you get uh, additionally, if you lock your, uh, your LP tokens from that into our uh, pool tab, you get um, Quick tokens as a subsidy, which helps increase the APYs. Then if you take, uh, and then if you take the quick you earn from that, so now you're getting trading fees plus some quick. If you take that quick, lock it in the dragon's lair, you now get dra D quick or dragon's quick. And that entitles you to a portion of the entire trading fees of the exchange, not just the pair you're on. So now you're getting trading fees from the pair you're on, say in this case, USDC and Matic. So you get some USDC, you're getting some Matic, you're getting some quick. And now uh, you're getting a portion of all of the trading fees of the exchange, every single pair, uh, or like 99% of them, the ones that matter, we map all those. Uh, and then that gets actually, those trading fees get converted on the open market into quick. So we have a converter contract that every you know couple hours or so 
it goes and converts all trading fees that uh, the exchange receives, uh, a portion of them into quick, buys it on the open market, distributes that to these uh, quick uh, stakers. So now you're getting, you know, USDC, Matic, quick, more quick from the trading fees. Then if you now the new step to that, another step that you get more yield is you take uh, your D quick and you lock that in our uh, dragon syrup pools. And when you, you there, you get to choose between any of the projects that have contributed. So if you could pull that up again, uh, whoever uh, was that Joe or John? Yep, yep. So, so here, if you look through it, it's really cool. Telcoin is the one I was talking about earlier. They're, they do a lot of work with mobile uh, providers. And so they've contributed, I think it's around $600,000 to this. Uh, there's 15 million locked of, of quick or D quick specifically locked into that. Um, and then those people are splitting $8,300 a day, which gives you about 19% uh, APR. Plus you're getting the, the 18% from uh, quick. Uh, and so you could choose between these pools. So what's really cool about this is we were thinking about doing a mega pool where you just get used when you stake your drags quick, you get like a little bit of each of these tokens. But we realized that that wouldn't be very good for these projects because the projects might uh, people might just dump a lot of the tokens because they're not actually right. researching them. Right. So instead, we did these single pools similar to Pancake. And so people choose one. And so if you're choosing one, you're going to make your you might be looking at APR. That's a big factor, obviously. But you're also going to look at is this project going to succeed? Is the token going to go up? Is this a good project? And then there's a lot you can see in our in our Telegram and on our Reddit and in our Discord. There's tons of conversations about, hey, guys, what do you guys which project looks best to you for staking your DQuick? And these are completely like uh, risk free. I mean, of course, there's always technical risk or things like that, but there's no uh, there's no risk that if these projects rug pull or do some crazy stuff or their token goes to zero, you don't really lose anything because this is kind of free money. You're not, there's no impermanent loss. There's no, um, they don't hold these contracts. These are all on the quick swap side. Um, and uh, so you just lock your quick and you get these free rewards from these projects. So you go and you check them out. Is this a good project? You research it. And so the more you see, the more that's locked in these, it's kind of a more belief in these projects. So you can kind of see uh, which ones are doing well. Um, it's a it's a really cool feature. And then uh, if you guys have any questions, uh, we'll, yeah. we'll, we'll leave you to that. And then we'll we'll announce otherwise, otherwise, uh, our newest. It's a time for announcement. Yeah. Wait, there's another layer deep into this. <laughs> uh, wow. No, not another layer. Another actually, actually, we are building more layers to this, but that's not the announcement. Today. Okay. I'm so, still trying to calculate my taxes from all of this. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, wait. Yeah. <laughs> so if I'm, can I just well, go I recommend, uh, by the way, token, token Tax is a great company for crypto taxes. Uh, that's who we use at LDA uh, and for my personal. So there's a little shout out for Token Tax. Uh, they cool. they know a lot of these intricacies. Um, I'm not sure if they're this deep. If they've uh, if they've integrated <laughs> dragon syrup uh, or or like you know yield farming stuff. But uh, I think I know when I last talked to them when I last did my taxes, they said they were working on all this stuff. So hopefully they have that stuff ready by now. They will have to, right? Because I, this is just two layers. This is just two layers. Like we like we are assuming that more than five or six layer will be will come in the future like that's like the farming is going to evolve a lot because like farming has basically proved that it can bring fortune to the projects like to the entire economy and to the entire ecosystem so farming is going to improve and a lot more complex farming is going to come right so these taxes like these tax companies these tax products they'll have to like improve and like at much faster pace yeah i can just see my like uh like the, the boomer generation now, like calling their CPA going, Hey, do you guys have uh, dragon syrup integration right now? <laughs> Just like, I <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, so question on this with, yeah, with yeah, D -Quick. Yeah. so can I just go grab D quick anyway? Like I can still, I can purchase that off and off the, off quick swap now, or is that only, I can only earn that. No, you can. So D quick. Go ahead, I, I don't think that like, you don't you don't you don't you don't need to purchase DQuick, right? So DQuick is a token which you get when you stake your Quick tokens on Dragon Slayer, right? There's a product called Dragon Slayer within QuickSwap, and if you have Quick tokens or if you are like uh, mining Quick tokens or you can purchase Quick token as well, right? So you have multiple yeah. options to earn Quick tokens, right? Once you have your Quick tokens, you'll simply need to go to the Dragon Slayer, stake your Quick tokens, and you'll get your DQuick tokens. Gotcha. And by having D quick, you get, you get quick I mean, essentially, yeah, I'm essentially getting the upside of tell, you know, tells APR 
um, by also not holding their token. And I'm depositing in this, right? So I'm getting the upside. So, I'm, but I'm not holding it. Like you said, you're not exposed to a rug pull. You're not exposed to any of that. But they're you're starting to earn some of their token in a smaller percentage of what you would do if you just like had to put that as the deposit down. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, and it's so just when, on when top you, of what you were already earning from your quick. So it's really cool. There's no uh, there's no loss of anything. You so you're getting your all those things I mentioned earlier. You're still getting all of that. But now you're just getting this additional APR on top of that. Uh, and it's it, I mean, in a way, I, I look I like it to like Coinbase uh, earn or one of these where they educate you about a project. So we're going to be starting to do some more educational material around a lot of these projects too, doing features and spotlights on them to give people, you know, to get people to kind of look at these projects more. Um, and it's it's a way for people to come at, you know, they they have their dequick, which they just get from staking quick. And uh, similar to like, you know, Aave, when you stake, you know, on Aave, you get like a USDC or whatever. It's just like that. So you take your dequick and you have a choice of where to put it. And you've got these options. What are you going to choose? So it forces people, you know, our hundreds of thousands of users, it forces them all to look at this and go, where, what's, which project do I want to look at? And then, so they all research. And we've actually seen uh, so far, I mean, it's only been out for four days, but uh, uh, the projects I've been like looking at, we've been like kind of analyzing a lot of these projects. Um, I don't know if we're even allowed to talk about price, but I mean, their, their prices, I think in this case we can, their prices have gone up since it launched. So that's pretty cool that, uh, uh, especially some of the smaller ones that have less liquidity and stuff. So it's pretty cool to see that they're getting a lot more like volume, uh, trading and even some price appreciation that I, you know, we don't know if that's from this or not, but. I mean, we've been giving them a lot of positive exposure. So hopefully we're, we're helping their community uh, get some exposure there. Yeah, absolutely. So we can uh, go ahead and announce. So the next uh, syrup pool, uh, I don't know if it's next, but very soon in the next uh, few days, we will be uh, launching our Matic syrup pool. So this will be really cool. Mm -hmm. um, we're actually gonna, so uh, Polygon is gonna contribute to that. Uh, in return, we're actually going to be also uh, contributing uh, a, a lot more quick to bring more liquidity to Polygon and specifically to the Matic token. So we're going to be matching them, uh, their contribution uh, is actually in a way six to one because we're going to be matching. So uh, there'll be $250,000 worth of uh, Matic that they're contributing. We're going to match that from our foundation wallet. So the foundation wallet receives a portion of all the trading fees of the exchange. Um, and we have a surplus in this wallet. We've been hiring developers and building out our infrastructure and growth and different things using this wallet, uh, but we have an excess in it. So we're gonna actually take uh, 250,000 from that. <laughs> nice, we got some people excited here. Um, so we're gonna take uh, 250,000 from that to match. So there'll be 500,000 of Matic in this uh, surf pool. Then we're also gonna take uh, five times 250,000, so 1.25 million, and we're gonna put that towards um, uh, building out more uh, pairs of mat for Matic on QuickSwap. Uh, so really exciting. We were actually also, and we might still do something like this. I, I, I think we're leaning towards uh, probably not and just focusing on liquidity, but we were also thinking about doing something where we contribute to the security of the Polygon network uh, on, on the Matic chain by uh, giving quick to validators uh, who are uh, and delegators who are who are basically creating the security for Polygon. So that was something we were looking at. Uh, it would be kind of hard to implement, and but I, it's definitely doable. But uh, we've been going back and forth with the Polygon team and our team trying to think of what's the best value that we could give to the Polygon ecosystem. Uh, and we think getting them more liquidity to more pairs and making uh, Matic token more liquid on Polygon would be uh, the best bet right now. Amazing, congrats. That's really amazing, wow. That's really amazing Rock uh, and Samib. Like, you know, thank you so much to, you know, like always uh, contribute, uh, you know, multiple times more than what, uh, you know, Polygon has contributed to you guys. And uh, many, many thanks to you guys. And then, you know, like it's, it's complete, like, you know, it's so phenomenal for me to see, uh, you know, like uh, you guys like coming together as community teams, like who were working, like Samib was de developing text related stuff on Polygon and Ralph, you guys were doing the, uh, you know, marketing related stuff and some other team member, you know, pe team members, the quick team members, and then you guys joining hands together. Oh. And creating this strong team, 
I think I I don't know like how many presidents are like this. I think Sushi Swap might be a president like that to 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 that or uh, you know I don't see but I don't see much of these presidents where these pure community teams came together and then you know join hand to create this billion team like this and and you know like with this all this governance and everything and you know trying to you know uh, create this decentralized protocol uh, you know and you know reaching Binance Coinbase and all that like this is really amazing and and thanks thanks guys for all you have done to, for the Polygon ecosystem thank you so much thanks to you thanks to you sandeep like uh, you guys have a great contribution in like whatever we have done so far like so th like so thanks to you thanks to entire team right like the, everyone like like you jd uh, anurag even arjun hamza like everyone has been so supportive like for us so like to this day i'm like very very thankful to you guys and yep. and like we we have we have another announcement guys i don't want to miss it right so oh yeah, <laughs> so yeah. We are going, we, fire yeah, it up yeah, yeah. so so yeah, I so don't even know what launch, this one is. Yeah, <laughs> this one is secret for you as well, surprise for you as well. Okay. Decentralized. Oh, really? So we are, we, yeah, we are, we are, we are going to launch two new syrup pools today during this call right now, right? So oh, like you just did you just make that happen like at the beginning for, of the call, and now you're doing it now? Like you just decided <laughs> that? Yeah, yeah. No, no, no. Like I decided that from the, from the very beginning. I knew you were going to ask about dragon syrup. <laughs> like I was sure about that, and like I was, I was about to launch it whenever you asked. Like you now you have asked it, so I'm going to launch it. So basically, we are going to launch two new syrup pools. One is for Exceed Me, and another one is for the Open Ocean. Or for the Open Ocean, and nice. I have just give me a second, and I'll launch it right away. Deployment <laughs> happening well. live right now. Right now, exactly. So if Joe hits refresh on that on that screen, is it there? <laughs> Yeah, yes, make it, it, it makes it all the way to all the way to the to the US internet over here, the interwebs. So while he's doing that, just on the, the last thing we were talking about, yeah, Sandeep, of course, man. We you know, we've been there since the beginning. Um, my entire basically not basically, my entire life has been dedicated to Matic, you know, for the last you know, couple of years, uh, like two and a half years now. Uh, I was uh, really excited when Samit came to me and I, uh, Sandeep had introduced uh, me and the, the Lunar Digital Assets team uh, to Samit and uh, Nick uh, and basically said, hey, look, these, these are the best marketing guys we know uh, and you guys are the best devs, so let's put you guys together and, and push this thing. So, you know, Polygon was really instrumental uh, and Sandeep specifically was really instrumental in the growth of QuickSwap um and uh, i think you know it was important that we had a really strong dex on polygon because a dex is the cornerstone of any De DeFi ecosystem you really can't do the rest of the stuff without a dex so once we had uh, you know quick swap uh then abagachi came which helped us uh, get a lot of our early growth and we were talking to ave for i we were talking to ave for i quick swap was probably talking to ave for three or four months uh and i think i'm sure Polygon was talking to Ave for a lot longer than that uh, before we were introduced to them. And so then when Ave came and they actually, uh, actually, bef I think Ave before, I'm not sure actually, but I think even maybe before they officially came to Polygon, I believe they were already providing liquidity to QuickSwap supporting us. They so were. I, I remember. In form of yeah. tokens. Yeah. yeah. Yes, yes, that's right. Uh, and those were like our version of their A tokens on Matic. So that was really cool. Um, and yeah, I think they were providing like $8 million of liquidity to us in our, when we only had like probably 50 million or less. So they were, Ave was one of the first big contributors to our liquidity. And I I never really understood why, I still don't. I, I know, I mean, I, I remember talking to Stanny and, and him just, I think he really liked that we were, you know, had a decentralized ethos and he liked what we were building. And he said that he, you know, they wanted to support us. I think, you know, partially because we, we raised no funds. Uh, you don't see that a lot. Um, you, you almost never see that. So we wanted to be as close to like Bitcoin as possible. I, you know, I'm a right. Bitcoin in heart. And uh, so we raised zero funds, no VCs. There were no VCs to dump on the public or anything like that. So you know, the token went from like 67 cents and a market cap of, I don't know, a couple hundred thousand to, you know, now 250 million. So the community who got in early, 
I mean, we were giving a thousand quick a day to Avagachi, uh, and, and which is <laughs> yeah. like right now is yeah. like what is that seven hundred thousand um, dollars? So we were giving them, you know, you know, in today's prices, seven hundred thousand dollars a day, um, and uh, you know, a lot of our. I remember it was really cool when, like, early on, seeing people like I just paid off all my student loans. Thank you guys, you know, and it was cool that you know we're not here like doing a big money grab uh but it is very rewarding to see you know all of the community and and us too because we were early buyers all my quick like i don't want to say a percent because then people will be able to back calculate what i have but <laughs> you know so lda did get one percent of the quick supply uh samip got one percent of the quick supply uh nick much uh one of our other co-founders got 1.25 percent. but that and that was it though so it's 3.25% total went to team advisors, Matic team uh, has been advising as well. And they didn't, they basically kind of took 1%, but that they're not really taking it. We're giving that all to the community. And so that'll be partially a small amount. will go to this liquidity stuff we're doing now. And then we're going to do more to airdrops to the community. But so raise zero funds, no VCs to dump. So it's, it's kind of funny um, that, you know, if we ever do bring in VC money, which, we probably will at some point. Uh, it won't be the VCs dumping on the public. It'll be the public dumping on the VCs. So, <laughs> anyway, right, on that one. Hopefully, hopefully, no one's dumping. But you know, it's pretty cool. That you don't see that often where the community really gets the full benefits. And that's why we have such a strong, loyal following is because they got all the benefit of it through just farming. That's where all the tokens come from. Is just farming and providing. Right. Liquidity. right. By the way, guys, the new pools are live now. Yeah. Congratulations. Cool. Awesome. It, can we see it now? Nice. Yeah, yeah, it's there. It's there. We'll open it's ocean. On your cool. now. Very cool. XCD and OOE. Yeah. Very nice. Yeah. They, they what right are the APYs in. right now? 8,300 and 1,400%. <laughs> so obviously, Only those. Eight, yeah, this is not financial advice, everyone. Only 83, 8,305%, though. Yeah. And, and again, there's no like rug pull risk there or anything like that. These, these projects. They, they sent us the tokens and we locked it into a contract. It's a smart contract. There's no, so you don't have to necessarily worry about like these projects trying to do anything weird because we control the tokens uh, there. Well, the smart contract does. So uh, the reason the APRs are so high, generally I would tell people, if you see APRs that high, steer clear, don't touch it because it's probably some kind of weird rug pull or like something weird is going to happen. The token price is going to drop. But in this case, it's just because he just launched it. Yeah, so that'll come down all Those will come down, yeah, as more people deposit. And again, it's basically free money. If you're holding uh, quick, you lock it for D quick. You take the D quick and lock it for these. And there's no impermanent loss or anything like that. So No, that's a that's a huge solve, actually, because I think a lot of people are worried or don't understand that. Like we said, we're, it's like we always say this. It's like folks are having hard, have a hard time, you know, if you're not deeply into financial markets or have some sort of financial background, even like understanding like what an ETF is or what, you know, a pool of stocks or like, or like, what is my financial advisor even doing? Right. And so we're, you went down like the, the dragon question. syrup rabbit hole and it was just like, it's very, it's very difficult. So it's like to remove that piece from it, um, I think is important. So I, I think these will do really well. Yeah. So we uh, yeah, are, I, I, I guess and we are over an hour, and I, I did want to give away a couple of Luna Crush T-shirts to some nice. of the questions out there. Um, there, a lot of these are about price, so I'm not going to answer anything. If anyone has any questions right now, please add them into the chat. But um, there is a question. I think this one's for Send for Sandeep, but uh, maybe more information about the Hermes uh, merger. When would that be completed? Any details to really share around that one? If Sandeep can talk. I think he was driving. He might be in the sorry, sorry. Room. Yeah. Could you could you repeat the question? When will the merger be Hermes be completed? Be com okay. Yeah. So we uh, the the Hermes team is already announcing the uh, swap contract uh, within like a few days, like maybe one or two days, and then people can start uh, swapping uh, their tokens, like Hermes tokens, into Matic tokens, and uh, their network will. Uh, implement the proof of stake network, uh, proof of stake uh, using Matic tokens in in maybe you know it will take I think I'm I'm guessing like a, a quarter like three months, uh, but we'll announce the uh, you know uh, solid dates on that in in some time. 
but uh, before that like there are you guys are in for like some very big things so yeah stay tuned i would say the quite a few things remaining like the hermes thing is uh, what i say is only the tip of the iceberg uh the most stuff coming amazing hmm. yeah how cool to see you know crypto projects uh joining together like that you know mergers and acquisitions kind of stuff It's pretty awesome. pretty cool to see pretty cool to see how the ecosystem's evolving yeah and especially the ethereum projects it's like very very easy for these mna kind of activities you simply create a smart contract decide a peg and then you know from one side uh, the tokens can flow and get converted into other tokens and you burn uh, all the other tokens right i mean the, wow. the 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 token that is being merging into it right so yeah i think it's very exciting and i think more and more projects will do this was this the first time that uh, that an acquisition like this took place Yeah pre- previously I think there was some keep and new cipher uh, thing also happened but I don't think it, it has happened before uh, for any publicly live tokens before it has happened There's been like, like projects like, acquire or uh, companies yeah. acquiring projects um but I I don't know of any yeah projects like token token project ecosystem protocol stuff uh it seems pretty unique to me I was really 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 excited when I heard it Yeah, I can't so think of any off the top of my head either. And it's well, yeah, I know I feel like there's been something that I've seen, but if the five of us can't pin it, it's like definitely in the first five then. It's definitely it's definitely early. Wow, amazing. Sounds like an opportunity for someone to do a, a, another startup around just this specific thing to solve this. Right. Um yep. Another another question um that is near and dear to me because I keep I I mask this all the time. This is totally stepping away from everything we've talked about, but uh What do you say to someone that doesn't know what cryptocurrency is? And I think really to to take this further, it's how do I get started? What do what are you guys telling people? You know, I get hit with this every single day. Um, what are you saying? I think I think Sandeep already answered this. Pull your socks up. Pull up your socks. Like to to the someone like who doesn't understand cryptocurrency like that's the first thing we should tell them, right? So that they are ready to understand more like they 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 get willing to like understand more about like what cryptocurrency is like you just need to make them understand like cryptocurrency is the future it's the present and it's the future as well right and you should definitely get into it like learn more about cryptocurrencies and get your hands on it so, like if you'll ask me like i tell this to everyone like you know there's a phase like if you talk about your human life there's a phase in human life first you are a baby then you are adolescent maybe a teenager then you are adolescent then you are a proper adult and then you get into your old age right and if you know someone like why why do i know like why do you know your like child the best because you have seen your child like since uh, his or his or hers like very early stages since when he, when he or she was a baby right so like that's a similar stage we are in cryptocurrency right now so if you will like take on the cryptocurrency when it's still in its infancy or in its baby stages just like assume like even i can't assume it like i can't envision that like like what will happen when the cryptocurrency or this entire ecosystem is in its like teenage or like adolescence age or like adult age right like you would be reaping fruits of being so early like that's the only thing i could like say i like that just a simple uh, one that i tell a lot of people is use youtube I mean it, everybody's familiar with YouTube and there's really a plethora of information you can find anything you want to learn on YouTube. I mean I know if your algorithm is bad and because you've been clicking a lot of like cat videos or like stupid stuff then they'll it'll feed you that but if you train your YouTube algorithm to give you good content by resisting clicking the stupid stuff and then clicking the good stuff eventually it'll start feeding you this loop of like amazing content. Um I mean I would also say to start with Bitcoin. I think if you're getting into the space, you know, look, I love Ethereum, I love Polygon, but a good place to the basic way to start is really just learning about why was Bitcoin created? What is what is it solving in the world? And uh then from there then you start seeing, okay, now what else can we do with this? And then that's when the the world just kind of explodes and you you fall into the rabbit hole and you get really muddy and uh yeah, it's then the the whole thing just uh uh spirals out of control. Uh it's like to combine those things it's like and it's like I don't know John you wrote on here like Polygon Studios I don't know what that is but it's almost like some you came up with like 
almost what if you started, it's like anything that you're trying to understand, it's like starting at square zero, right? So it's like, if you're trying to understand cryptocurrency, you, you should start with the history, right? And like, we all kind of start at that beginning phase. And then it's like, work your way up to where the market is today. Cause trying to drop someone into, you know, yield farming when they didn't just start with the double spend problem is a difficult, a much more difficult thing to do than like, Hey, we, we solved the double spend problem and look at the disruption in technology that's going to happen after that. We have these like 28 new internet things almost and smart contracts, but you can't drop them down here. So I, I like that. Maybe you guys need to make a movie. I, and I, I think, you know, uh, Polygon Connect is a like good playground for newbies, right? You don't have to pay a large amount of transaction fees right. and you don't have to wait for like, you know, like 15, 20 seconds just to play around, right? So if you are a newbie in a, you know, cryptocurrency or like blockchain or DeFi space, I mean, like you should definitely start your journey with Polygon. Yeah. Super cheap, wow. super cheap, like to do anything over there. So you can do a lot of stuff. You can play around different applications, like different environment, like just to understand. And when you like know, more about cryptocurrency, like it's your choice, like whatever you want to use. But do come to Polygon first, just to try around and get yourself acquainted with this ecosystem. You know, Samip, what you just said is is where I tell people to start. Like people people initially come to, I'm sure you all get it. Uh, hey, what coins should I buy? They're not asking you when to sell it either, by the way. They're asking you which coins to buy. And then when they don't sell it at the proper time, it's your fault. Um, and when you look at the data, most people aren't actually using the coins that they're that they're holding. They're sitting in a wallet somewhere. They're not doing anything for them. The overwhelming majority. So I always tell people, go set up a wallet. Learn how to transfer between wallets. Try, learn, learn how DeFi different applications like, like QuickSwap work. Um, learn how to stake. Learn how to participate in so many different ways. Buy an NFT. Like, go go do game. Like, do, use the Axie Infinity. Go play around. Like, don't don't focus on what coins to buy. Focus on the mechanics, and then you'll understand what makes sense. And I think that's the the problem is most people just buy and hold, and then wait for it to go up and sell, and they're not necessarily participating. I think that's what's going to be really exciting when you think of things with low fees and they're fast. Um, there's so many amazing things that are going to get built here in the next uh, days. At this point, <laughs> what, what's the uh, off of what Samit said? You know that polygon is the place to start because you can't look right now i think weighs like 80 so average transaction just to send some ethereum is probably i don't know ten dollars or something right now 15 dollars. but you know to do a trade on uniswap probably i think someone was telling me they saw it yesterday at um uh 30 or 40 dollars 50 dollars it's starting maybe even more because way i saw Gwei spike at 120 so it's probably not a good place to start your journey uh, is like playing on Ethereum just because, you know, when you first start, you probably don't want to be paying 20 to $100 a transaction. Uh, but starting with Polygon, you can you can do you can stake, you know, Mark Cuban, we uh, we had an interview with him recently and he was saying, uh, you know, you can stake 50 cents, uh, you know, on uh, on Polygon. So you can go on Aave and put 50 cents and try it out or go on QuickSwap and get some quick and go into Dragon Syrup, uh, Dragon's Lair and these things. You can play different games. Uh, you could do stuff like Zed's Run. Um, there's so there's all kinds of uh, game. There's tons of games. What's the website? Uh, is it Amazing Polygon? Yeah, I think What's it's the amazing. Website, the list of yeah. projects on Polygon. Anybody remember? We should all know. Awesome Polygon. <laughs> awesome, awesome Polygon. Awesome yeah, Polygon. Yeah, yeah, awesome yeah. Polygon. Yeah. Yeah, so that's a good place. You could just go to awesomepolygon.com and you can check out stuff there. Uh, getting on Polygon is really easy. It's wallet.matic.network slash bridge. And you can bridge any ERC20 over to Polygon. It only takes like 10 minutes. Uh, you do have to pay uh, if you're gas fee to bridge over. But once you're there, you'll never pay gas again, essentially. Uh, you know, but, for, but just, just for, to add to it, just to add to it, if you do, if you don't want to use bridge, you can directly come onto the polygon and use oh, on ramp services like Transact. And so you can directly go to QuickSwap and buy like assets directly on polygon as well. So you don't have to go through a bridge if you are a newbie, right? Yeah. yeah. Yep. On, on our quickswap.exchange, you can find those options, but you could also go to now there's a ton of exchanges that are doing direct polygon integration now. So you've got Binance is a great one. You can go on, on Binance and buy Matic and move it to uh, Polygon. 
uh, directly. Uh, Ascendex has this. I think does OKX have it, I believe. I think so. So there's a ton of uh, exchanges now where you can go uh, buy crypto and move it there. I don't think crypto, uh, Sandeep or Sameep does uh, crypto.com. I mean, they added Quicksoft recently. They obviously, they have Matic. Have they, have they added Polygon withdrawals? I don't think they have. But yeah, we were talking to a ton of these exchanges about adding direct uh, Polygon withdrawals and deposits so you don't have to even use uh, the bridge fees anymore because at, at time those get crazy. I mean, when recently uh, Gwei was at like 200, 300 uh, when things were getting really crazy. And so like a single swap on, on Uniswap was costing hundreds of dollars. So uh, I do recommend, well, when you see the Gwei starting to rise, it's probably a good time for you to bridge over and get ready because you you don't want to get stuck where you can't even use the bridge because it costs too much. So, but when, like I said, once you get over, you know, $1 of Matic will last you thousands of transactions, wow. maybe tens of thousands of transactions. One dollar of Matic might last you, you know, you might be able to uh, give that to your your grandchildren and they'll still be <laughs> and they'll still be doing transactions on call. <laughs> it it's so it's like it, you when you learn you want to move fast, right? And you want to try different things. And if you can't do that and you get handicapped by this thing that's preventing you because you're like, wait, that's like 14% of this transaction or 18%. Mm -hmm. You're just like, I, this is unusable. And we lose users in the industry that way. So you guys solved a huge yeah. problem. It shows. Um, congrats yeah. on all the success. I, I mean, I want to just that's do a little bit of people. Place. Yeah. yeah that's no, in, the, that's sure. in the first place why we created QuickFab, right? To like solve yeah. that particular UX problem, yeah. No, I have congrats. three more hours of questions if you guys have time. <laughs> yeah, we got a lot. We did, we're going to have to have you guys back. It's always a blast. I mean, like Sandeep's shopping and he's still here. Dude, <laughs> super appreciate you. Like, I know you're so, so, so busy. So thank you. I know all you guys are so busy um, and really, really appreciate you guys coming on and chatting with us again and having fun in the community and congrats on all the success. And we'll definitely be close with you guys and keeping track of what's going on and we'll have you back. Here, we'll, we'll do a, we'll do a quick a group picture now that we got Sandeep. Uh, that's a nice background there. So here you guys. Cheese, everyone. Cheese, cheese. Uh, cheese. <laughs> awesome. Nice. Good stuff, you guys. Yeah, we'll, Thank we'll you all. Back again. And yeah. thanks, Sandeep. I know you're a busy man. We appreciate you coming, brother. Oh, absolutely, my pleasure. Thank you, guys. And cool. thank you, Thank Joe you, and John. Everyone, everyone listening in the Thank audience, you guys. John, nice as always. Everyone. Thanks to the audience. Cheers, everyone.